Hello, N4HNH here. My friend Richard, N1RBD, uh, suggested this video. There's been chatter on some of the social media groups about um, uh, 60 meters and some of these modern radios, well, particularly the FT891 that you see in front of me. Uh, how do you get to 60 meters on these radios? And so uh, a lot of people apparently are under the impression that they have to do the Mars mod to these radios. You know, the Mars mod is a mod that uh, you're really supposed to have a, a Mars license to be able to do that. Um, that's the military affiliate radio uh, service. So uh, by, by doing a Mars mod to a radio, yes, it'll open it up to transmit on uh, just about all of the uh, HF frequencies. In other words, from 1.8 to, to 29.7. And that can get you into some trouble, but also it'll void the warranty. It will void the warranty on your radio. And these JSU radios have a three-year warranty, so uh, I wouldn't advise you to do that Mars mod unless you truly are a Mars licensed op operator. So uh, now vintage radios before 60 meters was a, was a available to us. Yes, you would have to do the Mars mod on it to uh, to be able to access it but modern radios not just yesu 7300 from icom uh, you know 890 990 from kenwood um they usually have the 60 meter channels pre-programmed into them now if you go back and watch my video from i think about three months ago i did a three-part series on 60 meters and i go into great detail why we ha you know why we have the band how we got the band uh the rules that we have to be careful of uh, because we do share that band with the government. And so uh, the FCC went to bat for us and got us, uh, you could say 10 channels, it's really five channels and, and, uh, and two different modes per channel that we can use on 60 meters, but we have to stay very um, strict about how we operate. Um, for example, we're, we can't get outside of our bandwidth and uh, that presents a little bit of a problem when it comes to using sideband because the um, 60 meter band is channelized. So, uh, and the channel happens to be the center of a 2.8 kilohertz bandwidth. So for CW, that's fine. But for voice at 2.8 kilohertz wide bandwidth, you would, um, if you were transmitting upper sideband, which is what we do on 60 meters, uh, from the center of the channel, then you would uh, you would exceed the bandwidth as you move up. Once you go up 1.4 kilohertz, you're uh, after that you're outside of the band. So there's some trickery that we do, uh, and and the manufacturers program it into the radio for us. Now, if you're modding an old radio, doing doing that Mars mod to open up all of the frequencies, then uh, yeah, you'll you'll actually have to program in specifically the frequency for upper sideband uh, because it is different than what it is for uh, the C uh, CW. So again, go back and watch those videos, the three part, three part series on 60 meters to better understand that. So I want to get into well, how do you get to 60 meters on an FT891. So when you buy one of these, you know, just like what you see there, generally when you turn it on, it's going to have 7.000.000 in the screen and it's showing that it is on, um, VFOA, VFOB, see that? So, uh, and, and a lot of people just start playing with the radio by saying, you know, clicking the band button up here and, um, you know, in going, uh, you know, you only have a momentary opportunity to do that, but you click band, rotate the VFO. If I want to go to 20 meters, I'll find 14 megahertz. And there I am. If I want to change the mode, I hold down the band button and then I can cycle through the various modes. So that's how you uh, typically play with the radio out of the box uh, before you've programmed any memories into it. And because a lot of people do it that way, they don't actually, they don't actually program any memories into their radio, um, they may not ever discover what I'm about to show you. And here's where the confusion comes in. I actually had a guy call me um, well, a month or two ago, very frustrated that his radio, his FT891, uh, would not transmit on 60 meters. So let me show you what he was experiencing. And I am on a dummy load. I'm going to tap the band key, and I'm going to find 5 megahertz. I wish Yesu hadn't put this in here, to be honest with you, because it's actually about useless. So 
I can, if I know that the USB frequency for channel one is 5.330, oh, let me get over there, dot five, I've got my fast button pressed, um, then yeah, okay, I can program that in. Now, you might be wondering, and go back, again, go back and watch my other videos, why isn't it 5.332? Because that's what most radios will show on their display, even for the sideband channels. But in reality, behind the scenes, the manufacturer has programmed it to move down one and a half kilohertz and transmit on 5.330.5. And it does that for all five channels when you're in USB mode. So let me, let me show you something I'm gonna transmit. And you'll notice that the red transmit indicator is flashing. It won't transmit if you access 60 meters through the band button up here. Well, that could be frustrating if you didn't read your manual and learn how to access 60 meters uh, on the FT-891. So again, I wish Yesu had not even put that there because it's created a lot of confusion. So here's how you get to 60 meters on an FT-891. And by the way, FT-991 works the same way. Just, you know, read the manual and find how to find the memory channels. Find how to find the memory channels. On this radio, you got a V slash M button. That's VFO mode or memory mode. I'm gonna see you in VFO mode right now. I'm gonna tap it. It changes to, oh, 501. Now, um, that, 501 it starts the 60 meter band. They're pre-programmed memories in the radio. And if you've never uh, gone into the memory mode of your radio, you wouldn't have seen it. But watch what happens now when I transmit. Solid red light. So the 60 meter channels work there. Now you might be wondering if, if you've done that on yours now, you may be wondering why does yours say 5.332 and mine says 5.330.5. That's some trickery. Um, that I did, and it is discussed in detail in that three-part series I did on 60 meters, but I'll give you a quick rundown on that. The memory channels can be can have a tag assigned to them, in other words, a name. So what I did was, see, the, there's the center frequency. Channel 50, or memory 506 is the CW, and it transmits at the center of the channel. So think of it this way. The, the channel is 2.8 kilohertz wide, and that is 1.4 below there and 1.4 above there. And um, so if we were to transmit and use this as our carrier for sideband, if this was where our suppressed carrier was, and we transmitted an upper sideband with 2.8 kilohertz of bandwidth, we would be outside of our boundaries and we'd get in trouble because we would be on the uh, frequencies that the government, use, uh, government uses. So what I did here was I just fooled it. I went into this mode here, the button here, second from the left, M and an arrow and a V. The, um, this kind of a memory write button. If you tap it, it brings up your memory channels. There's 501. It's just going to go to the one that I was on. And then I hit edit. And you see how you, you can go through here and you can add a tag. I could make that say Doug's favorite, you know, uh, uh, nightly net whatever I want to say by accessing these and you can get letters and numbers um, and punctuation and all sorts of things so what I did was it so think of it this way it's ASCII characters so I just went through there and found the number five and then tap it and if it's flashing you can move left and right okay when you see one you want to change you press it in and now I, I just went through there and found a decimal point. And I went all the way across there to say 5.330.50 space. And SSB, or if you want to, technically, it is USB. However you would like to do it. And then you press the enter key. So again, it's assigning a tag to the channel. Let me back out of here. So my tag, instead of saying something like my favorite net, it says... Um, 5.330.5, but it's just ASCII characters. And the reason I did that is because if somebody asks me, hey, what frequency are you on? Um, for example, I put out a spot for some that's on the air. If I were to tell them uh, that I'm on 5.332, which is actually what the readout on my radio says, and just look down here at the 5,000. That's channel one, channel two, channel three, channel four, channel five, sideband. 
Now there's CW channel one, two, three, four. See the 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 frequencies read the same. And on the 5000, I do not have the ability to do this tag thing and you know sort of sort of cheat. So, um, but the truth is, the radio is programmed by Yesu so that it's actually transmitting and listening on 5.330.5. For legal reasons, shipping it from Yesu to get FCC acceptance and all that, um, they have to lock these in, even the mode. You can't change it. You can't make this go to AM, for example, to, to, uh, to route through an antenna tuner or something like that. You have to stay within the confines of what's allowed. Now, some people do a Mars mod, void their warranty, so they have infinite control, but I recommend against that. The, um, but again, with the 891, I can use the tagging feature. So if I was to put a spot out and I told somebody I was on 5.332 USB, they would hear me, but I would be 1.5 kilohertz off frequency. I had that happen once. <laughs> so I said, all right, never again. I'm, I'm going to make these. So when I'm putting out a spot, if I glance at my radio, I want it to say what I'm going to put out as a spot. So I fooled it with that tag feature. There you go. It's 5.330.5 is where I'm actually transmitting, even if my readout says 5.332 USB. So that's how I did that. Now, um, again, so you, you get to 60 meters by pressing the V slash M button, getting out of that um, uh, the VFO mode and go to memory mode. Now, out of the box, by the way, there will be an M01, as I recall. I have two of these, one in my truck that I shot a couple of videos about, um, well, within the last few days. Uh, it has the FC50 tuner on it. This one I use for soda. That's why you have these, I have these rails on here. Um, I bought those from Portable Zero. In fact, they're up on my screen. Um, they're available in black or OD green. And the reason I have the rails on there is because I put this in a stuff sack and I put my microphone in a spare pair of socks and I put it all in a stuff sack and the socks keep the microphone from scratching the radio up. And the rails protect the knobs and on the back it protects the uh, connector. So Portable Zero sells those currently listed at $72. Um, it is very good if you're going to go portable with the radio. It even comes with a, um, um, a strap that can uh, hook into these and you can put it around your neck. So just in case anybody was wondering, that's why I have rails on mine. So when you, when you turn it on, it'll have a, if you do go into memory mode after you've turned it on, because it won't come up in memory mode, and that's why a lot of people miss this. Uh, when you tap that and it goes into memory mode, it'll be M01, and it's usually 7, as I recall, it was 7.000.000 megahertz. And, uh, and then you can store anything else you want over the top of that. So what I did was I, you know, go back to VFO mode, and I would, and I've, I've used, I never use these buttons now, but I did use them back then uh, when I first got to radio to go in here and access the different bands and modes I wanted so I could put them in memory. And so what I did was I assigned memory one, uh, 1835. That's a popular CW frequency for soda operators. And what I've done here, so, I, so that I don't really ever need these again, uh, if, I wanna use, if I need to use another frequency, that one just gets me into CW mode is all it does, and then I can move up or down. And if I press the memory button again, it'll just put me right back to the stored memory. Also, I can press in the multi knob and it'll see memory tune. And as soon as I turn the multi knob, it'll automatically also uh, go back to the stored memory frequency. So either way, press that button again or press in the multi knob where it says, um, well, let me move it off. So press in the multi knob, the MT lights up, move it and you're right back into uh, memory select mode. So out of the box, M01 is usually gonna have seven megahertz. So use the band key and then, you know, to pick a, pick a band, then long press the band key to pick a mode, um, you know, put a frequency in there, and then you press the second button from the left to store a memory. You know how to do that. Read your manual. You know, it's got all that in there. So what I did was, is I've put favorite frequencies for each mode per band. So I've got, this is my CW frequency. I've got a, a lower sideband frequency and then an AM frequency. 1.885 is popular you know, the 885s are popular with the uh, AMers. And then there's 80 meters, 3.535, again, a popular soda CW frequency. Uh, 3.856, a nice rag chew group that I like in the mornings. And again, 3.885 AM. 
So I'm not going to do every one of them, but you get the picture. I've gone through every band. Well, now 30 meters is just 30 meters. I've just got one frequency in there because it's CW. Um, but for, for the other bands, for the most part, I've got a CW frequency stored, a sideband, and a AM. And then, uh, by the way, the AM, sometimes I'll have that in there, sometimes just for the tuner. But I have worked some sidebands. So they're 17 meters, and then um, 15 meters. Now, 15 meters, I've got a CW, a sideband, and another sideband. It's a wide band, and I just thought I'd put a couple in there. And then uh, there's uh, AM, and there's 12 meters, and then there's a 12 meter sideband, 12 meter AM, uh, 10 meters, CW, and I got a couple in here for uh, sideband 10 meters. Then or actually, I've got three, and then there's AM, and then FM uh, 10 meters. There's 29.6, the simplex frequency for 10 meters, the call frequency. Then there's the uh, 620 repeater, 640, 660, and 680. You know, those are those operate just like a two meter repeater with an offset and a tone. And then um, I went ahead and put in some six meter, their CW, their sideband, the calling frequency. Um, and, uh, you know, just a few of the popular ones. There's the FM calling frequency, uh, 52.525. Then there's a local six meter repeater, another local six meter repeater another one and then there's 501 so if you've never gone into the memory mode of your FT891 you wouldn't have known you had 60 meters already available to you again it's true with the FT991, 991A any of the modern Yaesu radios as well as other brands so uh, I encourage you to well it is in the manual but sometimes you know I get it these manuals uh, you know leave a lot to be desired sometimes um, but that's how you get to them again I I think it's an oversight on Yesus' part that they allowed us, go back to VFO mode, that they allowed us a 5 megahertz option here and, and people go in there manually, go, and they look it up and they go, okay, for sideband, I've got to transmit a 1.5 kilohertz below the center of the channel. So, yeah, I got it dialed in, 5330.5, and yet, you know, they transmit and they get a flashing light. And it can be very frustrating. Why Yesu did that? Maybe they've got a good reason. I don't know. Yesu, feel free to comment. But um, it's really caused a lot of frustration for people, and I've had people contact me thinking their radio was broken, and it's not. Just forget 60 meters and using the VFO. Do it with the memory mode, and there it is. And again, you know, you can cheat like I did and use the memory tag option to uh, to make those say, read out the actual carrier. It's a suppressed carrier frequency is what it is. So again, go back and review those three videos I did um, about 60 meters and you can learn all you ever want to know about it. It's a great band. I call it a magic band. because it. And in fact, the reason we got the band, I'll give away a little hint of what's in, in uh, those three videos that I shot earlier. We got it because it reaches an area, a distance that 80 and 40 cannot. And it was argued that ham operators help out a lot in emergencies, and we needed that distance. We needed to be able to get that in-between range that 80 and 40 could not deliver. So there's a little bit of a teaser about how we got in, uh, 60 meters. Again, though, we only have these five channels and two modes that we can use, and we got to be very strict. And so don't get too upset with the manufacturers about why they've programmed these in like this and made them channels. They had to. And so, uh, because, you know, again, they're shipping this thing to you. They're responsible for making sure that, that it, at least from their perspective, it can't uh, do anything illegal. If you jailbreak it, you know, I guess that's the word I call it, uh, you know, Mars Maja Radio, then you're on your own and it's no longer Yesu's responsibility. And again, caution on that because it'll void you war your warranty. What Yesu said, I just read it the other day on their uh, USA uh, site on Facebook. If you Mars mod a radio and then you have a problem, you send it to them and they determine that the Mars mod has uh, caused the failure, uh, your warranty is voided. Okay, so I hope you found this video helpful and informative. I want to thank my Patreons for helping keep this channel up. Uh, that's www.patreon.com slash N4HNH, Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N. And uh, again, a one, one uh, wonderful thing you can do to help the channel is click that subscribe button. That means a whole lot uh, in, the, uh, in the way YouTube calculates things. 
So thanks a lot for viewing, and uh, 73 from N4HNH. And thank you for the question, Richard.